Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today was WWDC 2023, which is Apple's biggest event of the year so far. It's when they release all kinds of new things, all kinds of new features, and a lot was anticipated for today. Now, ironically, uh, although Apple released three new CPUs, a new Mac Pro called the Mac Studio, and their new incredible VR headset, ironically, they didn't use the word AI one time. And of course, they talked about some things that had to do with AI, but let's get into it. So the reason I'm making this video is predominantly for the M2 Ultra, which is the new massively powerful ARM chip that's in the Mac Studio or what is used to be called the Mac Pro. So the reason I'm making this video is I was browsing Hacker News as I normally do when I'm just trying to spare some time during the day. And I came across a post for the M2 announcement. And what this post said was since the M2 Ultra has 192 gigs of memory, you should be able to in theory run Llama 65B with full FP16 precision which is something that previously you couldn't even do um, nearly with an A100, you can do that. But um, surely even if you have a 3090 or a 4090 or multiples of them, uh, you couldn't do that, especially before a lot of tooling was introduced that made it possible to run Llama in smaller forms or at 65B form just on lesser hardware. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, uh, the M2 Ultra is very interesting. So in short, the spec of the M2 Ultra, which is in the new Mac Studio, a 24 core CPU generally, uh, with an additional 16 next generation high performance cores and eight next generation high efficiency cores, delivering basically 20% higher performance than the M1 Ultra. And yeah, that's cool for a number of reasons. Uh, and that's just the CPU. So it's a wild ARM kind of amorphous CPU. So we also have GPU cores baked in. This has 60 or 76 next generation GPU cores which is um, about a 30% improvement compared to the M1 Ultra GPU cores. The most interesting part of this, uh, one is the 32-core uh, neural engine, which is what drives uh, Core ML on these new processors. And specifically tying this all together, uh, which I think is kind of the most impactful part of this whole thing, is what Apple is calling the unified memory architecture. Um, so basically this is how the M2 Ultra talks to memory and how um, the GPU and CPU cores, basically all the cores can share that memory. And then also if necessary, actually um, expand that with DDR5 um, stand-in cards, which is kind of cool. This is all done well enough that there is about um, 800 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which is only 100 gigabytes per second slower than the amount of bandwidth that Nvidia's Grace Hopper platform has, which is Interesting when you think about it, because that's clearly a much higher performance part. So going back to whether or not you can probably run Llama on this, the, the general point this person mentioned was, yeah, you have the basically the bandwidth to do it. They mentioned that they've run Llama on an M1 Pro with 200 gigs of memory throughput, and they were running 13B, right? So in theory, it wouldn't be wildly out of the ordinary to think that with four times the memory bandwidth, you could probably run the full model at FP16 um, relatively fast. And uh, this is assuming that on the M1 Pro, Alpaca 13B, which is a sort of slimmed down version of Llama, actually runs fast enough that you can use it as a personal chatbot. It's more responsive than something like Midjourney uh, in its standard tier, and I think it's pretty cool. So of course it's not, uh, if you had the M2 Ultra when they finally release it and you tried to run this model, it would probably work, but it probably would still not be as fast as the H100 even though the memory bandwidth is similar. I, I think the biggest travesty of all this is we all have to wait and see if Nvidia ever ships Mac drivers ever again, because you would have to wonder how cool it would be to have a, a PCI Express based um, H100 in a Mac studio, but we'll have to wait to see if that ever happens. And uh, the other thing that's interesting is last night and then on Friday, there was actually, there were some huge announcements just in terms of using Apple M1 and M2 CPUs to run both Falcon 7B and another sort of slimmed down version of uh, Llama. The difference with Llama being that someone found out or figured out a method to run all of these purely on M1 GPUs, doing that with only GPU, no CPU. So I saw this on Twitter last night. Basically, this is someone who found a way to take a slimmed down version of Falcon 40B, so 7B, and um, run it purely on the an M1 Mac with Core ML. So this is using those dedicated Tensor cores. It's only running at around 4.3 tokens per second, but 
Falcon is arranged in a way where that actually ends up being pretty responsive. This is different than the other release because this is using um, purely the, the Core ML and Tensor element of the M1 CPU. And it's pretty cool because this is pretty much usable on hardware that's now nearing two years old. I'll link to the Hugging Face page so you guys can mess around with this. This specific example was using the Language Model Tester, which is a local Mac OS app that lets you benchmark this stuff locally. Now, the other advancement, uh, this came from a number of people on Twitter and GitHub. So initially, this development was just sort of a proof of concept to see if you could translate some of these data models that are needed for Llama to what's called GGML, which is a metal-based format that um, basically lets you do accelerated GPU and ML things on Apple Silicon. And initially, I, I think the proposal was just to add GPU sp support to GGML, and then that went well, and now we have this really in interesting implementation where we can see first on an M1 Pro with a Llama 7B, uh, maxing out all of the GPU cores while CPU usage sits at zero, which is awesome. Uh, the rest of the benchmarks are using the M2 Max with uh, 7B Llama, 13B Llama, and actually 65B Llama. And what's cool is these all were running at uh, a high enough rate of inference, so all basically above um, 10 tokens per second, at the low end, that they were all usable. Previously, there were plenty of ways that you could run Llama on macOS with Apple Silicon, but purely on the CPU. The work that led to this um, early, early on were early ports of the OpenAI Whisper model and having that run locally. So what's really cool is with all this work on Apple Silicon, um, the beauty of Apple Silicon is it's not too dissimilar from what's available on iPads and iPhones. So the idea that this will eventually sort of transpose over to true mobile devices is not completely out of uh, the realm of possibilities. What's also cool, again, I mentioned Apple didn't use the word AI, but um, one quick thing they snuck into their presentation was now when, I guess when you update to iOS 17, all of their predictive text is actually going to be powered by an LLM. And we're not really sure if they're using a QLaura or LoRa that actually learns from what you're putting in, um, but all they say is that adaptive predictive text is now actually an LLM. Anyway, a lot going on here. We have a video coming out uh, referencing some other news from last night, which was George Hotz and uh, his work on AMD ML. But as always, I hope you learned something in this video. If we missed something or we got something wrong, please let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.